Hi everyone. In this video, I will talk about how to look for veins for IV insertion. Being part of the Code Blue team at my hospital, it is my responsibility to gain IV access. IV access is important for giving life-saving medications, so I really have to be good at it. In this video, I'll give you some tips on how and what to look for when attempting to gain IV access. In this channel, I talk about all aspects of nursing. If you're interested in learning more about what it is like being a registered nurse, consider subscribing. I also would appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up if it has brought you any value. With that being said, let's get on with today's video. Firstly, in order to identify a vein, it is important to look at the vessels of a person's arm. Here are three pictures of the veins in a person's arm. In the first picture, you can see where the veins are located in a person's arm. So when I go in to insert an IV, I always try to map which vein I am trying to get. I tell myself, okay, I'm going to try to go for the basilic or cephalic vein. These two veins are coincidentally the ideal vein for IV access as it is less likely to occlude the line if the patient bends their arm. It is also difficult for the patient to take out or dislodge the IV when it is located there. However, in codes, typically the largest vein is the one I go for, which is the anticubital fossa. So as you can see, each vein has a different size and therefore you need to account for this when choosing which IV catheter you want to choose. The larger the number, the smaller the needle, which would be appropriate for a smaller vein. See, seems like a simple concept, but it is not uncommon for people to choose the wrong one. Another important factor is the depth of the vein. Veins that are deeper are going to be more difficult to hit. If someone is overweight or has a lot of adipose tissue in the arm, sometimes having these visualizations in your brain will guide you where you want to attempt to start an IV. Next, let's talk about how a vein feels. An artery will have a pulse, so you put your index finger and if you feel the vessel pulsating, avoid that at all costs. Next, try to visualize this picture in your head. Arteries are what we want to avoid when obtaining IV access. To feel a vein, you want to feel and see if it bounces up softly. If it is really hard or doesn't bounce when palpating, then it may not be a vein. Here are some tips on how to make your veins be more palpable. First, you can use a tourniquet. So tie a tourniquet tightly around the arm and have the patient make a fist with their hand constantly like this. This will, allow, this will contract their muscles and promote blood flow which is slowed with the tourniquet getting, to the, getting the vein to become more full and come to the surface. Next, have the patient put their arm down towards gravity, towards the ground so that gravity works on the blood flow and gets the vein plump, making it easier to palpate. Last tip I have is to use a warm blanket or a warm, damp washcloth. The washcloth is preferred as it will clean the arm a bit and, and with good lighting, you'll be able to see the vein better. When the body is warm, blood flow increases, dilating the veins and making them easier to find. The last thing that is worth mentioning is that veins have valves. And this means that you can put a catheter in, but if you hit valves, you won't be able to flush through even though you're inside the vein properly. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up so the video can be promoted to others. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.